basically all the cosplay props that I have made since the year like 2017. everybody my name is Kira and I am talking into a grill lighter because I don't know what to do with my hands so this is a bit of a long-awaited video I don't know how many of you watched this video but last year I made a bit of a get ready with me where's my egg some of you call it a beauty blender I call it an egg look at how dirty it is and in that video I mentioned that I do cosplay and then I wanted to make a video about my past cosplays or a video where I made cosplay or something along those lines and recently I've this hello and recently I've been receiving a lot of comments informing me that I never made the cosplay video. <laughs> well, this is the cosplay video. Well, it is and it isn't, because in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of all of the cosplay props that I have made in the past. This includes weapons, accessories, armor, the works. I'm primarily doing this because one, it is officially spooky season, and that is the season when I begin thinking about, you know, costuming and stuff like that. And two, because I thought this would be a good introduction into some other kinds of content that I want to make on my channel. From the beginning of having this channel, I kind of always intended to branch out into some more project-based content where I try out new mediums and materials and I just make cool stuff. Cosplay especially has been a passion of mine for a really long time and it's been one of my favorite applications and excuses to just make really freaking cool stuff. So come on, I'm going to be taking you along on a journey with me down to my workshop, which is actually just a corner of my basement. So let's go, follow, follow me, come with me. So this is my basement shop. Wow, very aesthetic, right? Let's take just a quick tour of my basement shop, shall we? We have such beautiful fixtures as Hobby Lobby bag, unused pile of fabric, and additionally for your consideration, ceiling pipes and stains on the floor caused by ceiling pipes. With special guest star, dead bug in a basket that's been there for far longer than I'd like to admit. And last but not least, Garbage can cosplay storage. Wow, beautiful stuff here. An absolutely immaculately designed basement shop. Incredible. It's not a very inviting place to film, which is why we're not filming here. Ah, uh, there's nothing like the sounds of the rolling green hills of your own neighborhood. We have a table now. Welcome to the front of my garage. And oh boy, is there a lot more stuff than I thought there was. So these are basically all the cosplay props that I have made since the year like 2017. And I'm pretty sure this isn't even all of them, but these are the most memorable ones. I kind of don't know where to start because there is just so much. So let's try to maybe start with some of the smaller pieces just to ease into this whole thing a little bit. First up, probably my smallest prop, we have Adam's White Fang mask from Ruby. Adam! This mask is just made out of a sheet of Thebra, which is a thermoplastic, some metallic spray paint, and some acrylics for some detailing and weathering. And yes, I did use rubber bands to fasten it to my ears. Brilliant, I know. I literally can't remember why I even made this mask, but it's pretty cool. Next up are just the bracers that I made for my cosplay of Rayla from the Dragon Prince. A bracer is probably the simplest piece of armor that you can make, but I do really enjoy how they came out, so I thought that I would include them. They're just made out of some basic EVA foam that I got from Hobby Lobby, assembled with contact cement, which is my favorite kind of glue, and painted with some metallic acrylics, and sealed with a glossy acrylic clear coat. They still feel really sturdy and solid, and the paint job is holding up really well. They're also really fun to wear with street clothes while posing like an idiot which is what I'm doing here. Craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. 
Next is Edward Elric's Automail Arm from Full Metal Alchemist. This was a super early prop of mine, definitely the first thing I ever made out of thermoplastic. I wore it at my third ever convention, and at the time it looked pretty wow. dope, but it has so many design flaws. I wasn't concerned enough with how it was gonna fit on my body and articulate, so it's not the most functional piece, and it was pretty uncomfortable to wear all day. But you know, it's not too shabby for one of my first times ever making armor, and I for sure felt super cool wearing. It's basically made out of Thebra, 5mm EVA foam, hot glue, velcro, and rivets, and it was shaped with a hairdryer. This one definitely still looks decent, but there are certainly some sloppy parts, but I admit I am extremely nostalgic about this piece, so I will let it slide. Fun fact, I met both Ed and Alphonse's voice actors while wearing this cosplay, and they both signed my arm, so pretty cool, huh? Most impressive. Next are Yang's gauntlets from Ruby. pieces are kind of a mixed bag for me because I'm still really proud of how the Ember Celica came out, but the robot arm is a little rough. I literally couldn't figure out how to put it on while I was filming this. I tried for like 10 minutes. Piece that goes on the elbow? No. Yes? Invisible struggling. Oh, maybe this goes under. We're gonna get it. Just you wait. We're gonna figure this out. Eventually, I straight up ditched one of the pieces and it actually looked kinda good. These pieces are made out of 5mm EVA foam, hot glue, acrylic paint, a heat gun to shape it, God. yellow spray paint, a glossy acrylic clear coat, and the little black lines are actually just electrical tape because I got lazy. Stop it. Get some help. These are definitely some of the most solid pieces I've ever made and they still feel super sturdy, so my dudes, Hobby Lobby EVA foam is where it's at. This one is also signed by Barbara Dunkelman, Yang's voice actress, and Lindsay Jones, Ruby's voice actress, which I thought was pretty cool. I still really, really like this one. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made, but if I ever cosplay Yang again, Miss Girlboss robot arm is getting remade because this is just not functional. What is the design? Also, last time I wore this at a convention, I used Edward Elric's hand as the robot arm, and I thought I was pretty clever. <laughs> no one will suspect a thing. Next is Pidge's armor from Voltron. Pidge has always been my favorite Voltron character. I immediately related to her because she's nerdy, sarcastic, and a woman in STEM. Of course, instead of doing the simple, comfortable Pidge cosplay, I had to make the whole stinking set of armor. I slaved over this cosplay and even made a couple of my friends help with the paint job, so. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. The entire thing is just EVA foam mats glued together with barge cement. There's a few buckles here and there. The thigh pieces are just glued to some leggings and the paint job is matte acrylic paint and spray paint. It's not even sealed with anything. So it's falling apart. Ugh, crispy. I used a pattern for the helmet from Evil Ted, but I can't remember if I used one for anything else. But I know I used the classic cover yourself in duct tape and saran wrap trick for most of the pattern though. I think this is actually pretty great for my first suit of armor. It's just a little rough around the edges, pretty uncomfortable. But you know, as a cosplayer, your priority is to make things look good not make them comfortable. But look at how happy I was wearing it. Wow, so cute. So now we have Pura's armor. Pura was originally my favorite character in Ruby, but then, you know. Shut the heart! But I was so excited to cosplay her and I think it turned out okay. The armor is pretty functional until you get to the legs. You see, when people have thick thighs, armor is literally the most irritating thing and literally never ever stays up. So all day at the convention, the armor was either digging Ow. into my flesh or falling down, which is, you know, comfortable. I'm not sure how I could have improved on the design, but not gonna lie, this has been one of my motivations for getting fitter because it's so freaking hard to make armor when your thighs rub together. Why? This armor is made out of poster board from the Dollar General, a bunch of warbla, a heat gun to shape it, some stretchy binding for the calf pieces, some jewels here and there for detailing, some metallic spray paint, and acrylics for weathering. And it is also actually sealed with some glossy acrylic clear. Overall, I think a lot of the pieces still look pretty good, but a lot of them don't fit anymore. So if I were to wear this cosplay again, I would probably have to alter them in some way or remake them entirely, which sucks, but what are you gonna do? Bodies change, honey. Bodies change. 
Do you guys like it how literally half of these are from Ruby? I had a Ruby face, okay? It's cute girls in like big weapons. What am, what am I supposed to do? Of course I like that. We're back to Rayla because I love her and I absolutely adore her long knives. There's just something so inherently elfy about a good long knife and I have been an absolute sucker for it since Lord of the Rings. But these were super last minute. I made my whole Rayla cosplay in about three weeks before a convention. So that being said, I'm still super proud of it because it's actually made of mostly scrap materials. So the bases of these were actually recycled from my Zuko Halloween costume from a couple of years ago. I was going to make his twin I blades, but I ran out of time and I had these lines around whenever I was about to make Rayla, so I put them to good use. They're made out of EVA foam, two wooden dowels down the center for structure, some 5mm EVA foam for details, and then they were just sanded and dremeled for shape, and the details were added with a heat gun, and the paint job is metallic spray paint with a little bit of matte acrylic for weathering thrown in with a glossy acrylic clear coat. As much as I love my other props, these are probably my favorite. They're the most recent props that I've really made, and they still feel really solid and smooth, and they're just like so fun to pose with. I really can't wait to make more props like these and improve my sword skills. What can I say? I'm a simple lady. I see a sword, I have the overwhelming desire to make the sword. Oh, hi there. What's up? It is several days later now. I'm going to be getting into the bigger props in just a second here, but before we get to that, let's hear a word from this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a fan of Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that offers classes on creative topics like illustration, painting, video editing, and countless others. Recently, I've been really into Denise Byron's class, Sewing Basics Make Your Own Clothing. If you're interested in cosplay, sewing is a super useful skill to pick up. I've been sewing for like seven years, but I still feel like I'm lacking in the more detailed areas like finishing and making everything look polished. So so Denise really helped me out by explaining that in this class. Skillshare's classes are also convenient to access, easy to digest, and watch at your own pace, and since their platform is focused on learning, it's completely ad-free. Their classes average at around 60 minutes, so it's easy to fit them into any lifestyle, and since their classes have a range of difficulty, whether you're looking to level up your existing skills or dive into a new creative outlet, you can jump in no matter what level of experience you have. Plus, Skillshare is always releasing new premium classes, so you'll never run out of things to learn. Skillshare Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who sign up using my link in the description a free one-month trial of their premium membership. That'll give you enough time to watch a few classes and explore your creativity, deepen your existing passions, and learn some new skills. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring another one of my videos. As always, check out their classes, and when you do, it really helps me out, so thank you so much to everyone who has done so. Now back to video, Kira. Excuse my disheveled appearance. This video was a lot more intense to film than, <coughs> <coughs> than I thought it would be. A bug literally just flew down my throat. <coughs> so behind me is my Ruby Rose scythe from Ruby. Now this is a really special prop to me. I used it at numerous conventions and it was one of the first bigger props that I ever built. It was also the first thing that I ever built out of EVA foam and the first thing that I ever built that included some kind of hardware. I made this in I think about 2017, which was like the tail end of high school for me. I basically designed this and came up with the building plans for it myself, which at the time I was very proud of. Now I can see some of the design flaws happening, but let's talk materials. Like I said, this prop is basically a mixture of EVA foam and hardware slathered in acrylic paint. The handle is just a giant metal pipe that I got at Lowe's that's threaded on each end. Securing that in place are two brackets connected by some nuts and bolts. The entire head is made out of EVA foam mats that were shaped with a Dremel and secured together around the cross pipe with some screws, nuts, and rivets. The rifle pieces on the handle are made from EVA foam and E6000, and the scope is from an old set of binoculars that broke. The entire paint job is done with metallic spray paint and the cheapest acrylic paint 
paint that I could find at the Walmart. And the weathering is also just diluted black acrylics. I sealed it with clear Plasti Dip and that began coming off almost immediately, so I don't recommend that at all. So assembling and disassembling this thing is kind of intense, but I did need it to break down into multiple pieces because the convention I made this for was actually out of state. The whole scythe breaks down into six pieces. The head, the handle, the two rifle pieces, the trigger, and the tip. The handle just screws into the threaded pipe in the head, the two rifle pieces slip onto the handle, and the trigger strap holds them in place. And the tip was originally just one piece, and it broke, but those pieces just fit snug on the end. The main strenuous part is screwing the handle into the head. Because of the shoddy design, it doesn't always screw in easily. Here's me struggling to screw it in for like five minutes. The biggest design flaw for me is how I did the handle. Since it's threaded and the threads slip, you can't hold it out to the side or swing it like you would an actual scythe. The pipe also doesn't extend to the tip of the blade or to the top of the pipe, so you can't set it down to shoot it like Ruby does, and you can't rest it on its head. It's also like way too heavy for something like this. If I were to remake it, there would be quite a few design changes. Overall, I'm super proud of this thing, even though it's falling apart and it has lots of flaws. And I definitely wear the fact that they almost didn't let me into the convention with this thing like a badge of honor. Speaking of heavy, gigantic props that they almost don't let you into the convention with, let's take a look at my brother Zabuza sword. So a lot of you who were trying to guess what this was on my community tab guessed correctly, it is Zabuza's sword. So this was actually not made by me, I didn't really have any part in it. This was actually a collaboration between my late grandfather and my brother for my brother's Kakashi cosplay, because Kakashi uses Zabuza's sword at some point during Shippuden because the reanimation business and I, I don't know, it was weird. But I thought I would show it off because it's a really, really cool piece, but it's also kind of a train wreck because it weighs like... 40 pounds. And yes, my brother did drag this around a convention all day with him, so like, why? Like I said, this is definitely a super cool piece, and whenever I get my own place, I hope to have this above my mantle, because like, wouldn't that be such a power move? Hello, welcome to my house. I have a giant sword above my fireplace. Don't you dare mess with me. So in terms of construction, this thing is a lot. So the entire sword is just made out of the heaviest materials possible. The blade is made out of a 2x6 piece of wood, which has a tang on the end that inserts into the giant metal pipe. Then there's a metal bracket bolted to both sides of the blade to reinforce it, and that's also nestled in the pipe, and the pipe is held in place because they just shoved a bunch of cement up into the pipe. I mean, we might as well just weld an anvil to the end at this point, because this is just so unnecessary. Pro tip, if you're trying to keep weight down, in a cosplay prop. Don't use a metal pipe and then pour cement into the metal pipe. It's super cool, but how impractical is that? And last but not least, these are the swords that my grandfather and I made for my Yato cosplay. <laughs> We made both of the Seki, and I had a lot of fun doing it. I learned some stuff, but admittedly, he did make most of them. My grandfather was a really cool dude, and he was really great at woodworking, and he like made a bunch of cool stuff for us, for our cosplays, and he's one of the reasons why I got into prop making in the first place, because he had a wood shop, and I could go in there and I could start making things out of wood. So everybody, just give a big round of applause for my late grandfather, because he was amazing at this, and he passed some of that passion along to me. But these essentially, or just two long heckin pieces of wood. If I had to guess at the starting size, these probably started out as just one by twos and then he just sanded them down. And from there we just wrapped the handles with some bandages because that's literally how his swords are. I didn't seal them or anything, so the paint job is kind of slipping at this point. But you know, Yato is literally a god of trash. So I feel like it actually sort of works for the whole look. And they look pretty great in photos, so I can't really complain. In the future, I might redo the paint job and then actually seal them with something so that they last. But for now, it works. These were the props for my first ever cosplay, so I was like really, really excited to use them and they were so much fun to pose with. <laughs> And I met some friends at that convention, so I'm very nostalgic for these pieces, and I just wanted to show them off to you guys, even though I didn't fully make them myself. And I think 
that might actually finally be everything. I also made John's breastplate from Ruby and a Kylo Ren helmet, but they were for someone else, so I don't have them anymore. Also, I feel really stupid. I also made Dustin's Demogorgon from Stranger Things. Here it is. I can't believe I forgot to include this. Oh my gosh, this video has taken so long to film. This is like my second day of reshoots, because the first time I filmed this, it looked bad. Cut! Ooh, that was that was really cool, wasn't it? I'm filming this before I film the rest of the video. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me on my little cosplay prop tour. I definitely really enjoyed showing off all of my props to you guys. Anytime I'm working on a project or a cosplay or crafting something, that is probably when I am at my most content. I know cosplay and crafting can be kind of intimidating and expensive to get into, like, Believe me, I'm working on a project right now. I know how ridiculously expensive it can get, but I think one of the most like interesting things about it is that you can really be anyone, have any level of experience with crafting and get into it. Like it's something that really anyone can do because the skills that you need to do it are just so learnable. So if you've ever had an interest in cosplay or crafting or just making cool stuff and you've always just felt really intimidated by it. Let me tell you, anyone can learn it. Anyone can do it and like, just go for it, my guy. So I hope this inspired someone out there and I hope you guys enjoyed having a peek into some of the other stuff that I like to make. If you watched until the very end, thank you so much. I always really appreciate it. It helps the videos do better and just launch out there into the algorithm. And if you wanna help this video out in other ways, feel free to go down below and you know, like and subscribe turn on notifications, you know. <laughs> I really appreciate it when you guys do that. Look out for more cosplay related content and if you have any suggestions for other cosplay related content you want me to do, leave them down in the comments below and while you're down there also tell me which cosplay prop was your favorite. Really am channeling that used car salesman energy that I wanted now so we're in the zone. Auto zone. And besides that, I am working on a crafting project right now, and that's going to come out sometime in October. I'm not sure quite when, but if you're interested in cosplay related content from me, keep a lookout for that and, you know, maybe uh, subscribe. Okay, thank you guys all so much for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am very busy today. I have to go and do engineering homework. That's not a joke this time. It's actually what I have to go do. Bye! <laughs>